Second Timothy 3 and he's telling him but you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life purpose faith long suffering love perseverance Paul was taking uh, Timothy as his disciple and and Timothy was watching Paul in all situations كان يراقب كده المعلم بتاعه في كل حاجة be a disciple don't be ها أخيرا لسه وصلنا أخيرا وصلنا أخيرا هاي نراجع كده بسرعة Our goal is discuss some qualities. Number one is love. First Corinthians 13. Love on three levels. Love for God. Love for one I'm serving. Love for the church. The distortions. Excessive concern with results. Administration. And relationships. Uh, attachment. The call, we talked about the call. When you are called, you are on the right track. Uh, many like to join as a good, useful activity or just to follow the trend. You be steadfast, receive a call, commitment, open heart, and it comes with power and talents. Discipleship, Timothy. And there is a, a nice a nice saying here uh, by Anthony D'Angelo. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. When I'm learning, I'm growing. Learning means growing. Practice to be a disciple. Don't just read or study for a lesson. For yourself. You need to grow for yourself. You can only be able to give if you are growing. If you are the same, if you are the same, after a while you'll find nothing to, to share. لو أنا بنموش كمان شوية هتلاقي نفسك نشفت ما عندكش حاجة تديها. You'll find yourself empty. Right? Try to grow always. You know, don't be satisfied with the level you're in. Be anxious for more. عاوز أقرب من ربنا أكتر. عاوز أعرف الإنجيل أكتر. عاوز أدرس أكتر. You know, the more you, 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 you take it this way, the more, the better servant you are. Never believe that you know it all. A lead, good leader, somebody who is a good student. So be always attentive to continuous learning on all levels. On all levels, learn, 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 learn. Yeah, and not just Bible. You need to learn more about the kids, about the age you're serving, about uh, the church, about uh, you know everything what helps you. Maybe ideas. How do I come up with activities in the lesson? How how do I uh, have an attention grabber? How how teach yourself? Grow, grow. Grow in knowing uh, the people you're serving and their families, right? And never discount criticism or advice wherever you may encounter it. Take it, learn, try to fix it. Don't take it in an offensive way or start to be defensive. No, take it. Thank him. Maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong, but take it and uh, consider it from God. If, uh, we talked about love, talk about the call. Next is battle, battle inner selfishness. The enemy of service is called selfishness. And selfishness is not just when somebody is saying 
bragging all the time. You can be a humble person, but you're selfish. <laughs> you're humble in the sense of Akhtet Samahni, you are humble in the sense of I'm sorry, uh, you're humble in, uh, in obedience, but we're talking deep inside. I'm humble deep inside or not? Or I'm, I'm trying to make people feel good. <laughs> for battle, this battle of selfishness for, be, for you to be a good servant. For you to be a good servant. And Jesus was very clear in this. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, the grain needs to die. It remains alone. You come across many struggles and many challenges. Take it with a good heart and say, this is for me. God is giving me a lesson. He wants to kill my selfishness. Be happy with that. Let the grain die. When it dies, it brings forth fruit. When Christ was ready to die, this when we received salvation. Right? When you are ready to, to be down for others and to, to, to work hard without any appreciation eh? and for you to have an opinion and they never take with your opinion but you pray right this is a humble person right battle selfishness this will make you bring forth more fruit selfishness is a disease that suffocates our capacity to love. Uh, it's either me or others to exist. <laughs> For me to love others, I have to be little, to belittle myself, that I be able to love others. Yani when when somebody comes and tell me. Well, I'm gossiping in confession, my son. I tell you, the problem is, when you start to look at other people's mistakes, you forget about your own, and you will never be able to pray for those people you gossip about. I mean, I need to, as John the Baptist said, I need to decrease for him to increase. This is the battle of selfishness. Try to recognize any personal inclination tainted by egotism. شوف كده بصمات ال ال الكبرياء والأنانية جواك. Fight it by taking a firm stand against yourself. أوف عدو النفس كده يعني. Wrestle your own self and rebuke yourself. Sit down to yourself every day and try to repent. Try to to change yourself and try to to pray about it. Don't fear exposure of your faults. Sometimes God allows this this exposure that I that He breaks some selfishness, some pride inside me. Take it as an opportunity to humble yourself more. Daily repentance in the presence of the Lord. Regular confession. These days I'm calling some people who are not <laughs> confessing regularly. It's not a matter of a record I'm, I'm, I'm holding or I'm checking, oh, this person uh, this long didn't confess. It's for your sake, for your sake. People who are regular in confession are growing. People who are not, are not. <laughs> confession helps. It's not uh, about... Abuna knowing doesn't matter. He he can live without it. <laughs> it's a matter of you growing. When you sit down to to confess, you are exposing yourself. You yourself realize how far you are, and this will help you to go back and work on your weaknesses. 
because sometimes it's a matter of selfishness and pride which preventing me from uh, exposing myself I don't want Abuna to know about this he will look differently at me forget about me let's look at God and the fruit I need to be bringing forth um, next one caring for the one I'm serving we're talking basics uh, love call uh, be a disciple fight sel- selfishness it's number five by the way so yeah, I guess the numbering is wrong number five caring caring for those I'm, I'm serving many people take service as a lesson believe me it's not a lesson the moment you enter the class believe me and uh, prove me wrong if you want the moment you enter the class the moment you are about to, to give a talk they read your eyes they read your eyes is he prepared? is she prepared? does she love me? am, am I welcome here? three questions they, they, they get the answer right away you don't have to prove anything they read it <laughs> they read it the moment they feel they're not loved they're not welcome or you're not prepared they turn off their computer <laughs> they disconnect and you start them find them back jumping with harfa a and interrupting uh, 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 all this they've, they've read it they have read you look at uh, the other day we had and Seraphim giving a talk to the youth, remember? And I was not there, but Sammy was telling me the attention he got from the kids was uh, very encouraging. Their youth, college, and uh, they have, yani, they have heard a lot, but the way he approached them, he pulled their attention. He was able to connect well. So you need to care. Again, it's not a matter of the lesson. The lesson needs to be well prepared. And prepared does not mean the script or yani, the words you're saying. No, prepared means you keep your, your kids in your mind while preparing. And see, does this match their needs or not الكلمة دي مناسبة لهم ولا لا I'm ready in the sense of if they have questions am I ready to answer their questions or not I may even think of their questions and I include it in my lesson this is not written in the curriculum believe me <laughs> right for you to, to have an attention grabber at the beginning and to pull their attention with a game with a question with a uh, activity whatever for you, you are keen to implant something in them. It's not a matter, oh, I'm done. It's my turn, I'm done. It's only next month when I have my next turn. <laughs> You're here to care about those souls we entrust you with. You care about them. You want them to learn something, to grow, to change to uh, to be better Christians and believe me remember Keda your childhood I'm sure every one of you can still remember a lesson very well you may got it in first grade in second, fourth, fifth grade you still remember it and you still remember the teacher and his uh, body language and the examples he gave you or she gave you because it touched you be such a servant be such a servant care about the people you're serving and their needs see in Galatians my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you الذين أتمخد بهم حتى يتصور المسيح فيهم يتمخد هنا it means 
neighbor, you are working hard. Huh? But we were gentle among you just as a nursing mom cherishes her own children. Kamurdi'a, ka ummu murdi'a. Kunt baynakum ka ummu murdi'a. Care for them, care for the, uh, their needs. And uh, in Colossians, he's talking about his pains and suffering. Uh, he's carrying for their sake as a completion of the cross. Alamu katakmil lil eh lisfadib. Nitab min agli lil nikhdimhum. Let's work hard that we benefit those we are serving. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Again, we just talked about the lesson. It's not just the lesson. Those who are acting up, uh, it's a signal to you that they have a problem at home, that I need to call them, that I need to check with the family, that they need more attention, that may they may have previous problems I need to take care of, I need to be listening to their problems, I need to be there, caring. You're not serving their mind only, or their soul only, you're caring about the whole person. You're caring about the whole person. And for this you need to connect well with God. A servant can neither benefit the ones he serves nor feed their soul with love, faith and hope unless he first maintains a strong connection with God by whom all such gifts are given. ترجع كده كل يوم بعد الخدمة after service give a report to your master as the disciples uh, did in ninth hour gospel uh, they gave a report they give a report name by name and you pray for those who didn't show up and those who acted up and those you have a problem with and the Holy Spirit will guide you what to do what to do and how to care of your people. Okay. Number six, impartiality. Impartiality. Adam at Tafri. Adam at Tafri. Never care about a group without the other. You want to give extra care, give it to the weak. But not to the regular or the the one who knows more or the one who is more friendly and or the one who loves you more please this we call partiality don't be don't be partial see in Ezekiel it was uh, a blame I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down says the Lord God I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away First, in this chapter, Ezekiel 34, he's talking to the priests how they mistreated his people. So he's taking care of them himself. Uh, He's taking care uh, that the one driven away, bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick, but I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. Fat and strong here, meaning... uh, the ones who are attacking the, the, the sheep. Keep in mind, keep in mind, if you oppress a kid or mistreat a kid, the Lord will take care of him, but you are in trouble. <laughs> if you mistreat a kid, you are in trouble, but God will take care of him. If you want to get the blessing, care about the weak as God is caring about the weak and he cares about you too. Never be partial. Oh, No favoritism or partiality toward a particular popular group. Christ favored the weak and the outcast, not the good ones. But to do that, he suffered. To do that, he suffered. Look at this. 
What is this? When he went to when he went to Z Zacchaeus. Yani this verse is about Zacchaeus. What happened when he was about to enter Zacchaeus' house? People talked about him. See? He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. And this time, Bardu, with the woman, see, the Pharisee judged him. This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him. For she is a sinner. For you to care about the weak. They may tell you, oh, you're spending too much time with this person. Why you care too much about this person? You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You're driven by the Holy Spirit. You want to make sure that this kid will not be driven away. Will not be driven away. Stay guided by the Holy Spirit. Not by, by what people say. خليك ورا الروح القدس هو اللي يقول لك تعمل ايه مش الناس فيلوشيب فيلوشيب ما goes along with caring fellowship here in the sense of be there for them in all their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity he redeemed them and he bore them and carried them all the days of all. For كل ديقهم إيه تضايق وملاك حضرته خلصهم. حس بالناس حس بديقتهم. Be there for them. Be tempted with them. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. ما تحتقرش. Don't despise their struggles. Don't rebuke them for their struggles. They are struggling. And as I just told you, those who are the worst are the most struggling in their lives. Keep this in mind. Don't say, well, I, I, I wish the clash will, will be without this person. This person you don't like is the one who is suffering the most and who is about to be lost don't lose him please don't lose him uh, be there be there caring even if you struggle uh, we have a high priest who, who is sympathizing with our weaknesses in everything feel for their weaknesses as your own Believe me, if you care about the weaknesses of others, this will relieve you from many bad thoughts and many bad habits and many struggles in your own life and will relieve you. حتى بالبلد يقول لك إيه اللي يشوف هم غيره يهون عليه همه. إحنا هنا بقى مش بنتكلم على هم الناس، إحنا بنحس بالناس. حس بالناس ربنا يحس بيك. When you feel for them, God will care about you, about your struggles. Believe me. Uh, try to be there for people in their weaknesses. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. Those who are mistreated since you yourselves are in the body also. Uh, those who are in in bad shape. As I told you, the worst is the most suffering who needs true attention. It's not a matter of preaching as much as holding their hands and leading their way to light and life. There are, there are people who are not hungry for knowledge or a lesson, good lesson. They're hungry for a touch, for a hold hand, for a visit, for a call, for a friendship, for an advice in life, whatever it is.
and here I want to just make sure you get this point spend time training and counseling I realized this just lately kids they need training it's not enough to say we need to pray every day, we need to read the Bible every day, you need to confess regularly, you need to take communion, no, 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 no. You need to train them. Maybe they don't know how to pray. Maybe they don't know how to hold an agbeya. Maybe they don't understand the Psalms. Maybe they don't understand the creed. Maybe they don't understand the, 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 the liturgy. Maybe they don't feel the communion. Maybe they don't know how to confess. Maybe they don't know how to make friends. Maybe they don't know how to behave. Maybe uh, their mind is uh, that they solve the problems with anger. Maybe they don't know how to hold their hands to themselves. Maybe they don't know how to control their tongue. Train them. Train them. Help them. Sunday school is not just about teaching Bible. You're forming a whole person. You're serving the whole person to be a better Christian in life, a better friend to others, a good husband later and a good wife later, a good mom. You're training people to be, to live Christian. This is the servant. That's why I told you at the very beginning, not everyone can be a servant. It's only people who are called, people who have open heart, who are ready to give up a lot, to sacrifice a lot for the Lord and his people then only then you will be touching their lives and they will remember you all life long that this person had an impact on my life Fakrin Abu Maximus when he stand, was standing here and talking about the servant he served him in Montreal and he was there for the use all the time and we all admired the servant Sayyidna or Abuna is talking about him. He cannot forget him, not the lessons, but him being there for him. Train your people. Counsel them as they do in school. Let me tell you this. Abuna Tadros Malti, I was listening to one of his sermons. And he was saying, I had a Tassoni, a priest wife, coming up to him and she was very upset. She told him, Abuna, let me tell you this. I was called in a school to translate because there was a kid who just came from Egypt. He was not able to deal with the other kids. So they called him and called the parents, the social worker, the teacher was there, the principal was there, and it was a, a, a meeting. And they called this Tassoni to come for interpretation. And they offered her money. She said, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be paid. I, I want to do it as a volunteer. This is a church member of ours. Okay? So they, she told Abuna, they spent with this kid at least uh, uh, two hours trying to help him feel good and, and they want him to talk his language. They were not talking, they were not allowing him to talk in English. They made sure that the, he got everything translated to his language and then he will answer in his language so he feels free talking. The reason Tasoni was upset, she was telling Abuna, see how much they spent just for this kid in this meeting, how much, and she was offered, for example, uh, whatever, $25 an hour. Uh, imagine by, as a social worker how, how much they paid her for these two hours and, and this person and the teacher and, 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 and the principal, just for this kid to feel good about him uh, accommodating the new culture. She's upset because the church does not do that. We don't care. 
We don't care. We don't look at each person as an important individual whom you need to pay much attention to and to uh, whatever it takes, how much we spend, but to help this person to feel good about himself. I'm sorry the talk is kind of getting long. This is the last point and then I'm done. Accept other servants. Accept other servants. We're working as a team. Working as a team, as a one body. As it's written here in Corinthians. One body, members of one another. Don't allow the devil to play with your mind comparing. Huh? I was better off with this group. I don't like this group. You know, she gives a better lesson than me, but I'm better in, 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 in crafts. Please, we're, we're completing each other. We're integrating each other. We're not competing. I remember very well Abu Rafael Sarwat Marakshi, you know him, and he was saying, Please don't look at churches as competitors for not competing the other church or competing the other youth meeting. Ours is stronger. Their youth is not as good as ours. Their, behave, behave, their behavior is not right. We are one. It's one church. It's not several churches. Even if they are called after different, different, different saints, we are one. We are one. Huh? One team. One body of Christ. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Look at this. Christ has shared his powers with his servants so that as a team they accomplish the goal. Even in soccer. <laughs> They say the the team of Egypt is very good in playing individuals. <laughs> they do individual playing, but they don't know how to play as a team. You want to score high? Play as a team. Eh? Complete each other. They come bond as a team. Accept other servants. This is the will of Christ. This is the will of Christ. A true servant gathers and avoids scatters. Serve together. Remind yourself that each one has his own character. Harmony is a testimony in itself. Harmony is a testimony in itself. Conclusion Let's examine ourselves on these characters, principles. I know that you all, it, you know, you knew it all. And we get to come to something new. You know, we can share this with you. And during this fast, let it be dedicated for the peace of church and our service. Please, this fast, we pray for the peace of the church and for the service. And I love to conclude with this psalm which we pray in uh, the 12th hour. So in conclusion, it's love, being called, being a disciple, fight your selfishness, care for the ones you serve, and never be partial, spiritual Fellowship, be there for the kids, accepting other servants, and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Chita Luko in Aziz Hamat Hatwafit. Aziz, our our co servant Aziz, her uh, mother in law just died today. If you want to call her, uh, you have a chorus. Any announcements, Marco? Okay. Let's pray. ليس لنا دل عند ربنا يسوع المسيح سوى ت.
شركة وعطية 